Good morning and welcome to Uncage Expeditions. Boy, have I got a trip for you. Now, what we do on this trip is we're heading up to uh, Markula, I think it's called, in Queensland. We're going to visit the Bush Company. People who don't know who the Bush Company are, um, they specialise in, obviously, <laughs> everything to go bush. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, we're, we're visiting them to go and pick up one of their clamshell rooftop tents. This is the surprise I mentioned in the other video, uh, some changes that are happening to the cruiser. Um, now, I've been toying with the idea of getting the rooftop tent for a fair while, um, especially since I've been doing trips by myself. The swag and stretcher and everything, look, I love my swag. It's comfortable, it's warm, really enjoy it. And when we go away as a group, you know what, no problems. When I do solo trips, it's a pain in the ass. Rolling up that double swag, I mean, I keep my sleeping bag in there and everything as well. So rolling that thing up, mate, just a pain. So, that's why I've been toying with that idea for a while. Look, they, they are a bit pricey, the rooftop tents. But, look, there are cheaper alternatives, but you get what you pay for, like anything in life. Um, this one was probably the one that I liked the best. Uh, they're manufactured, designed in South Africa from, as far as I know, um, and the quality is fantastic. So I've just left Melbourne probably about half an hour or so ago, um, and on my way to, we're probably gonna, well not we anymore, I'm doing this trip solo too guys, I don't know if I, don't know if I mentioned that this whole trip's gonna be done by myself. Um, my wife Josie, who was supposed to come on the trip, look, because the trip got delayed a little bit, she had some things that she had to do and she couldn't leave, so I'm by myself. All good. Um, I've never done a trip this far, this long by myself actually, so interesting to see how we go. Anyway, back to what I was saying, I went <laughs> off track there a little bit. I uh, want to get to Moree tonight, which is in New South Wales, northern New South Wales, um, near the Queensland border, and then from there, the next day, you know, it's going to be a relatively easy drive. Today, probably going to be driving for about 13 hours. Uh, I want to get most of the driving out today. I'm fresh, I'm relaxed. First day, you're excited. So, get most of it knocked out today. Tomorrow, I said five, six hours, I think it is. And then we'll be there. So, just plodding along. What time is it? Five o'clock. 5 a.m. in the morning. It is six degrees outside on the Hume Highway. And this will be a good test also. Um, I haven't done a long trip like this without the caravan for a, actually, never with a car set up like this. So, it'll be good to see what I get out of a tank. Um, with the caravan on, I think I was getting low 20s litres per hundred. I think it was low 20s. Which, look, in all honesty, I was I was quite happy about. Low 20s or high teens, I can't remember, but I was really happy about it. I mean, the van is a big van, weighs a bit, the car weighs a bit. The car's not aerodynamic. Um, the only thing that's going to be a bit of a nuisance on this trip, which is going to make me use a little bit more fuel, which is funny, is the extra fuel I've got on the roof. I've got two jerry cans up there, so always good to have extra. And that's about it. Anyway, very excited. As I said, got a long way to go. This is just the start of it. Got me V. Prepared for a nice, nice drive. Time to think. Too much thinking is no good, don't think. Yeah, we're just out of, just out of Finlay in New South Wales and it's eight o'clock in the morning and look at this fog. Unbelievable. The sun rose at about seven ish, quarter past seven or so. And this fog is crazy. It's beautiful though. I don't know if it's coming out in the camera as bad as it is. I hope so. If it doesn't look that bad in the camera, you'll be like, George, what are you talking about? Just 
Dubbo. Uh, what time is it? 2.30. So, been driving a while. Uh, had a bit of a break at West Island for about half an hour or so. Um, whenever we come through Dubbo, a bit of a, you know, it's turned into a bit of a tradition now. Um, that whenever it's normally myself and my wife. Whenever we drive through Dubbo, we always have to stop at this particular place and grab a bite to eat. Where are we? Here we go. love Obordos but it's not not that big in Victoria for some reason don't know why New South Wales everywhere, everywhere else it seems to be decent size wise you'll find it quite readily Victoria no not so readily anyway so gonna have a bite to eat um, and just kick back here for about half an hour or so while I eat relax and then off to Moree, done 830 odd k's and still got just under a quarter of a tank of diesel left so don't know if I'm going to fill up here or keep driving so see how we go. Just filled up with uh, BP diesel, I always use BP, personal preference I'd say, I don't know I've just heard it's better so I've always used it, never had an issue. Now. 138 litres and we've done 837 k's times that by 100 16 and a half litres per hundred which you know isn't too bad considering I've got the two jerry cans on the roof um, and fully loaded so that's, that's not too bad I thought it might be a little bit less, but you know, all good. Yeah, anyway, let's keep driving to Moree. We made it to Moree. Woohoo! It is nearly 7:30, so it's been a relatively longish day of driving. Um, but we made it here, all good. And you know what? I'm actually not that tired. I reckon I could drive all the way up to Makula, but a little bit of sensible side to me sometimes, saying, you know what, pull over, relax. I've got plenty of time to get there. Got all of tomorrow as well, and I think there's only, I don't know, 500Ks or so, roughly? Six? I don't know. I have to double check. Anyway, now I've just got to look for a motel because I don't have my swag or caravan or anything with me because we're picking up the rooftop tent um, so we're gonna uh, stay in a motel tonight stay in a motel tomorrow night too which is something different I haven't done that for a while anyways let's find some accommodation for the evening Now this is the accommodation for tonight, we checked into the Artesian Spa Motel, got a luxury one person villa, <laughs> got all the necessities, hey there I am, yeah she's alright, she'll do. I chose this one because it's actually got artesian pools, so they're filtered, one's at 32 degrees, I think the other one's at 40 degrees. So after a long drive, it goes soak in nice warm water like that with all the minerals and everything. Can't be beaten. Not that I've done it yet. Actually I have, at Lightning Ridge. Same thing, but this one's actually in pools where the other one was kind of not a part of anything. Anyway, I need to take my stuff out of the car, 
bring it in, just my clothes and that, have a bite to eat, and go for a swim or a bathe. One or the other. Okay, these are the pools. These are the pools now. There's three pools here. This one here, I don't know if it's coming up properly, but <clears throat> this one here is just a cold water pool. That one there is an artesian pool. Let's test the water. Oh yeah, that's nice. I think that's at 32 degrees. And then the one here. This one here is, I think, 40 degrees, they said. Time to jump in and soak up a little bit of those minerals and the heat. Okay, now it's the morning. And there I am. Howdy. Not a bad night's sleep here. Um, obviously, the room's tiny, but all good. Now, today is my birthday. Um, and probably the first birthday I'm actually spending alone. Um, yeah, so it's probably the first birthday I'm spending alone. Um, now, my wife got me the ARB Lynx system for the car um, for my birthday present, and that was <laughs> brilliant. She always spoils me. Um, but today, because it's my birthday and I'm alone, she thought she'd just get me something just so I've got something to open with the card. So, what she got me was oh can you see that binoculars which I've always wanted they'll come in handy this trip thanks babe love you now the plan for today I'm gonna leave here soon what time is it uh, 20 past 7 got up early went to sleep early wasn't really much to do put on some TV but anyway so wake up early got ready had my shower freshened up don't I look pretty? <laughs> um, gonna throw everything in the car, start driving. Gonna get to Markula today. Um, not a lot of driving today, I think it was six hours or something from memory, peanuts. So I'll be stopping along the way and just taking it easy. Get there, relax until tomorrow. Anyway, let's get backing up. Left Moree, now on our way to I don't know why I keep saying owl. It's always plural. Excuse me, maybe, I don't know. I've always been traveling with people, I suppose. So it's always owl, we. See how we go anyway. I'll try to change that by the end of this trip. So going to Markula today, it's 550 odd Ks. So six and a half, nearly seven hours to get there. Not in a rush today. It's a cruisy day today. Um, the GPS is saying we should be there at about 10 to 3. So even with a few stops, relaxing, one, two hours, really doesn't matter. Just cruising along. It was a fresh morning out in Maury. It was 3 degrees when I got in the car. Now it is 9, sun's out, no clouds in the sky. Beautiful day. Now let's see what I'm going to have for breakfast today. Maybe a nice pie from a bakery. I know you're probably looking at the video saying, George, you don't need any more pies, mate. And no, I don't, but you know, it's my birthday. I have a pie in the morning. Why not? Anyway, keep on cruising. Oh, my V. I didn't get a V out of the fridge. Damn. Oh, well. Next stop is, I think it's Gundawindi, um, and then we'll be in Queensland, and I'll get my V when I get my pie then. 
Oh well. No smart George should be thinking. And this is what happens on highways out kind of outback at the moment. What the size of this thing? Oversized, all right. Back of a truck, one of those. Another one that's afraid of the edge of the road. Ammo. Plenty on him there, Michael. Yeah. Yeah, it was the back of those mine trucks. Those big things, the dumpsters, or whatever they're called. I think they forget that the bloody caravan behind them sticking out on an angle when they pull up like that. Yeah, for definite. As you can hear on the UHF, some caravan as they put their car in the on the side there, uh, but the caravan's still sticking out. And that big truck with its big load needs to negotiate around it. Oh, well, let's see what else we see. Just in good the windy now. Stopped at the bakery. Mmm, time to have breakfast. Let's see if it's any good. Have to put the tomato sauce on there. Wait. Let's see. Not bad. Not bad at all. A bit thin. The flavour's nice. Yeah. Happy birthday to me. I bought myself a little cake as well to have a birthday cake later. Celebrations by myself. But I'm going to keep eating my pie now. Fill up petrol or diesel and hit the road again. Mm -mm -mm. An update on the fuel usage. I just filled up 79 litres, done 490 k's, 16.1. And I've got to also tell you that I've been sitting on 110 the whole way. So if I was sitting on 100, that'd be up much, much lower because the cruiser idles at about, uh, revs at about 2.4 at 110 whereas it sits on about 2.1 or so at 100, so big difference. So fuel consumption would be greatly different. Anyway, let's hit the road again. Just thought I'd show the facilities at BP Gunda Windy. Look at this, a long handled window washer. So you can do the whole window very easily. A hand basin, soap and everything right near the diesel pumps. Now this is the truck section, but geez, BP, Gunda Windy, Queensland, well done. Well done. Very impressed. Probably the best one I've been to. Keep up the good work. On the road again. Still just driving along. 40 k's out of Markula. On the, on, what's it called? Steve, Ir Steve Irvin Way. And just passing the Australia Zoo. 500, 400 meters on the right. What a beautiful area. Fantastic. As I said, so 40 k is about half an hour left. Nearly there. There's the entrance to the zoo. Anyway, back to what I was saying. What time is it? Okay, five to five. I've taken the drive really easy today. Turn on this. I don't know if you can see me or not. Um, yeah, so just taking the drive really easy, relaxed. Um, stopped, relaxed a little bit, so that's why it's taken a bit longer than it was supposed to, but still here in, in time, it's not dark yet. Same thing today, tonight, gonna find the motel, crash there for the night, wake up in the morning, I'll probably go do a bit of shopping, because I haven't got any fruits and veggies and things like that, because you can't bring them across the borders. So I'll go do that tomorrow morning, and then we're gonna be at the Bush Company at 12. 
So, exciting, can't wait for that. After driving for, how many k's have I done so far? 1,680, so it'd be 1,700 odd k's in a day and a half, nearly two days. I actually feel quite good. I'm not, you know, not sore, not tired, not drained. I reckon I'll drive another 1,000 k's. Lucky I don't have to, but that's in the next couple of days. Ah, uh, well, see how we go. Yeah, really looking forward to this rooftop tent, in case I haven't mentioned that. Can't wait. I haven't seen one in person. Um, love the theory behind it. Did some research. Bush companies, fantastic quality. Reviews come back really positive on it. That was the way to go. So I'm glad I've gone for that one. But just can't wait to actually have it on the car, see it, touch it, feel it, jump in, lay in it, see how it is. Really exciting. Anyway, this will be the last probably motel for this trip because I didn't bring a swag. I don't know if I said that earlier. Uh, I didn't bring a swag or anything with me because I'm in the rooftop tent. Didn't want to carry two sleeping setups. So last motel. Might have a shave. I'll have a shave tonight. A good shower. And we'll take it from there. Anyway, let me get in there, find the motel, and I'll get back to you. I don't know if you can see that properly, but it's Top Spot Motel. Uh, this is where I was spending the second night. Cute little motel. Very friendly staff. This is my room. I'll make sure I lock the car. Yeah. Okay. So, it's actually not that bad. The actual room itself is much nicer than the previous night. But, the other one had the artesian pool, so... You know what? They've all got their niceties in there, just a shower and toilet. This one, it's like a little apartment kind of thing. It's got the sink, microwave, got toaster and that down there in the cupboards. But really nice, leather couch. I've just edited um, a video, see? Even when I'm away, I keep thinking about my YouTube channel. Obviously I'm filming another one and I've just edited the Land Cruiser review. I had Hungry Jacks for dinner today. Um, and I think that'll be it for the junk food. Yeah, I think that'll be it for the junk food for this trip. Um, but it was my birthday, hey. Today's junk. Um, that's about it. Now I'm gonna have a shower, have a shave. So I look, look pretty, <laughs> look good for the video. Um, and tomorrow, fun. Rooftop tent goes on finally. I'm hanging. Anyway. Gonna have a shower, go to bed, get up, and that's it. See you in the morning. It's the morning of day three, um, and just about to leave the motel. Um, beautiful motel, nice, clean, um, very friendly staff and everything. Just had a bit of a chat with them for a while. Um, so now, gonna go shopping, grocery shopping, get everything I need. Might have some breakfast somewhere and then head out to the bush company to finally get the rooftop tent. Anyway, let's go. Nearly there. Just passing the Sunshine Coast Airport. Another couple of turns and we're there. Very exciting. soon find out. Okay. Yeah, 
there's the four wheel drive of oh, the Ruthie videos. Say good day. And that's the sign I've driven 1,800 kilometres to come and see. As you can see, these people know four wheel drives. Look the quality, everything's nice and sturdy. Nice and hard. Max tracks accessible, love it. And there's there's the container with my tent in it which is just just arrived that we've been waiting for a little while for but it's finally here and now let's go meet Dean and the boys and get this fitted How are you, mate? Good, man. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Yeah. Likewise. Been looking forward to this for a while, mate. Yeah, no, for sure. Been a long, long drive. Yeah. Only 1,800 k's. Around the corner. Days, one, nine, eight. No, probably one and a half days I'm here. Yeah, good reason to get out for a bit of a drive, mate. Exactly. I got bored at home, so why not? No, get out stuff. for a drive. Now, well, let's get into the tent, Tell eh? me, Tell me a little bit about this, mate. I've been looking forward to it. I've been hanging for it, actually. Yeah, yeah all right. Let's go have a look. Done. Come inside. Come inside. So basically, we literally landed our container yesterday, so it's been absolutely full on, um, yep. so good timing. Started unboxing this, basically what we're going to be doing is, um, yeah, one of our classic clamshell rooftop tents. Mm -hmm. So effectively, this is, this is how they come in uh, from South Africa, all neatly packaged, so we can ship them around the country if need be. Yep. Um, basically what we're going to be doing is lifting this up, um, um, bolting on our gas struts, mm -hmm. so the gas struts attach on the sides. Yep. Um, after that, it's ready to go on the vehicle. Beautiful. Might have to, depending on what canopy you have, a roof rack, might have to fab up a few brackets. Yep. Um, but that's that's really all. Pretty straightforward fitment. Done. You know what you're doing, so I'll leave that part up to you. No worries, but Now, well, these are yeah. manufactured in South Africa? Yeah, so yep. um, all manufactured in South Africa, um, in our shop over there. Um, you know, aluminium, uh, black powder coated frames. Mm -hmm. Basically, we've got the roof rails in these as well. Yep. So this is the the latest of the classic series tents. Mm -hmm. You've got all the additional features, like the roof rails. There, we've got an internal amber, white, and red light. Beautiful. Ready in there for you. Fantastic. Um, so that we can always wire that up later on. You know, to get that working on the inside. Yep. Also, an Anderson plug on the inside, so you can charge up your cell phones or connect connectors to it. Yep. Where you want to charge. I've already got an Anderson plug wired up there, ready to go. That sounds fantastic. Mate, I've been hanging for it. I'm sick of rolling up a swag and that by myself. It just, I'm over it. Well, listen, I don't know if it's me lazy, but I'm over it. No, well, that's <laughs> it. You know, setting up your bed in under a minute's going to be fantastic. It sure will be. Yeah. yeah. Let's get into it. All right, bud. That's us. And this is the first time it's been opened. This is how yeah. it would come if it was to get, to get delivered anywhere. It still smells new. <laughs> it was like that car when you just pick it up. You know, Beautiful. The dealer. The only problem is we get in here dirty. It won't keep that smell for very long. No, unlike a new car. That's too <laughs> true. So effectively, we've got the um, the override pole, which we've just put into place to keep it open. Yep. Um, now our struts will be on the inside. That's them wrapped up in in bubble wrap, yep. like that. So simply unpackage these, attach them onto those two points, mm -hmm. and we're good to go. Perfect. So not much setting up at all, actually. No, it's at, oh, 15 minutes or so. Yeah. I'm really happy that you did the black powder coating. Yeah, it's come out looking really good. Yeah. And um, you know, also consistently black in future will be will be really nice. Yeah. Now, what weight can these support on the roof, Dean? Mate, you're looking um, just more than 50 kilos, around 50 kilos. Yes. It's, it's designed for, you know, things like your recovery boards, like Max Tracks or yep. something like that. Um, surfboards, kayaks, solar panels is a great thing. So to add on solar panels, 
you know you could probably get it at least 300 watts worth of solar panel on yep. the top there if you need it mm -hmm. um so it's mainly for that we don't recommend you know like big 35 inch tires and things like that yep because they obviously have a lot of scented weight yep. in one section but um so some wood yeah. Throw some be wood fine. up. yeah yep. throw some wood up there no problem i mean with these rails and they just take an, an eight millimeter bolt that slides mm -hmm. in there yep so you can Literally put a few load bars on there. Yep. Um, load bars of your choice, really. Mm -hmm. Put a, a few up there. So you can always attach onto the bar work. Yes. Um, bearing in mind that this, this is a three mil top, so yep. it's that strong in its own. I mean, yeah. you, you'd be able to walk over that effectively and it, it won't be a problem. Yeah. Well, that, that's why I asked. Uh, I can't put any load bars on because it won't fit in my garage. Oh, exactly. So we're talking, with my calculations, yeah. where it may be, I might have about 40 mil to play with. Fair enough. So I might even have to let the airbags out a little bit to drop it a to little bit to down. get it in. No, it'll be nice and streamlined, mate. So yeah, keep exactly. It as low as possible. But yeah, if it's stationary, I can sleep up there. If it's a warm night, that yeah. wouldn't be a problem. No, no I mean I'm a lightweight. I only weigh 45 kilos. You know, in my training physique. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> sure. All right, let, let, so let's double that roughly <laughs> at least. <laughs> but yeah, that wouldn't be a problem if I was to walk up there. If it's not moving, no, that should be fine. Yeah, yeah. that should be fine. Fantastic. another nice trick around that's there. when you know that something's built well and the quality is there you know what when someone like myself can walk up on it um, not a problem obviously I can't stand on it and go driving on it one I'd fall off <laughs> number two is it's not designed to have that motion of weight up there so you got to take everything into account there guys sorry Dean before I cut you off no, you are saying right. so I'll show you a nice trick you just um, I'm gonna grab a couple of these we're using for various things, but these are basically eye bolts. Oh, perfect. Come up any hardware store. Yep. And um, so you're mentioning about firewood. Yeah, that's um, what I'd probably use it for, to be honest yeah, with you. Even, even for surfboards or something like that, you know, you want to strap that on. Yep. Those are great. 8 millimeter. Oh, eight perfect. M8 eye bolt, tie that on. You oh, know, yeah. And you can hook a strap over quite easily. Perfect. Pull something down. Yep. So these are great and they come out so easily, um, you know, if you need it, just on the perfect. Them, so. You know what? I'll grab a couple of those yeah, off you, good, if you don't good, mind. Good little trick. So. Perfect. Really excited, in case you can't tell. Look at it. Beautiful. Beautiful. I really need to look at the camera. Joe Robinet, same thing. Look at the camera, not the screen. But, hanging. Hanging. Tonight will be the first night that I sleep in it. Hopefully it's starting to rain again. Last night it pelted down. I feel like I'm in Melbourne, not the Sunshine Coast. This is Melbourne weather. I don't think it's really coming out. But really excited. Look at it. Beautiful. Yay! Rooftop tent. Fantastic. And the quality looks really good. I'm really happy with it. This is the first time I've actually seen it. But really happy. The seals look heavy duty. Yes, I just put it over the tent. So, can't wait. And that's one side done. That's one side done. Notice you're putting the, um, the thickest section of the strut facing upwards. Yep. I like how it's all pop riveted too. The silicon there as well, sealed nicely. Now there's gonna work its way loose. Fantastic. Okay, so that's done. Beautiful. All this in. second side was a bit more difficult, but nothing that a bit of elbow grease doesn't fix. That's it. And um, is that it? That's that's basically it. So with this one, it's just a, just a, a spare mechanical override that we have. Yep. In case ever you do lose a strut, or maybe in ten years' time, there's a bit little gas in them. You yep. know, it gets a bit soft. Yep. Um. So this I generally just tuck in at the head, yeah. 
yeah. In front of the mattress, but yep. behind everything. Look, I suppose it's also a bit of security if you're sleeping in there and there's no one around or you may think there's some idiots around, you can put it in, so... Exactly. If your mates are there and they're a bit drunk or something, they think they'll be funny and, and close it on you. <laughs> exactly, so just keep it propped up. The next step basically is, um, what I usually do is I close it up again. Yep. And um, just make sure that it's together. Mm -hmm. It just allows me to put some, um, you know, ratchets or slings around it so I can lift it up yep. with, a, with a forklift. Um, if there's enough for you, you know, a whole bunch of mates, you can basically yeah, lift it on my hand. What does it weigh in total? Um, just over 80 kilos. Okay. Jeez, that just pulls it all in quite well, yeah, surprisingly. That, it pulls it in really quickly and you just go around and make sure that you've tucked in, you know, the one or two little extras. Yeah. Oh, well, at least we know the struts work. <laughs> there you go, brand new struts <laughs> to work, so that's good. That's Oh gee, this is going to be much easier than the swag, I tell you. Yeah, so that one's all locked and ready to go. Perfect. Next step is get the vehicle inside. Yep. So we can inspect what uh, racks we got on the top. Yep. And then once we know what to do, we can work out what we're going to do with the brackets. Fantastic. Let's awesome. bring it in. All right, mate. that would have interfered with with the tent so we're just gonna have to put some other brackets on and mount it straight to the tent and um, again because the tent's a quality tent like you can bolt accessories to the side can't go overboard obviously can't go too heavy but so you're basically just gonna make some brackets um, which fit like a u-bolt works with suspension of vehicles so yep. you're gonna be pinching the tent down onto your Rhino Rack heavy duty crossbars mm -hmm. um, on the top end or load bars. Yep. So I'm just basically marking up off a template of one that you'll fit. Um, I've used a 25 by 5 mil stainless steel mm -hmm. uh, piece of flat bar. So I mean that's strong as in being in stainless and literally when you got in, when you get two bolts pulling up, virtually our, what we've checked is basically a bracketry you can see up here. For example, of the template, it's going to be just perfect. Those bolts are going to drop down either side there to pinch it. So you're not going to get any flexing or bending perfect. at all on the stainless. So it'll be good. Perfect. At least we know that everything will fit 100%. Yeah. so what I noticed is and that's the thing when fitting these it's never a perfect science but basically um, the sides we're just touching on the side of the load bars so all I'm doing is I'm putting about a five millimeter spacer in to raise it up slightly yep so that the sides don't rub we don't want it rubbing against you know rubbing the powder coating off yep perfect. we can help it so that's just going to slot in like so 
just to give us a little bit more height that we need. Perfect. On the sides. Okay, now we're doing the trial run with a ladder. How's that? Oh, man, that is perfect. perfect. That's great. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. That'll work beautiful. Uh, beautiful. Now, now I'm getting excited. Yeah. <laughs> We've just lined it up as well. Um, perfectly on the canopy. In line with the rack and everything. So, just need to bop the thing down. It's looking better and better. All bolted up now. And I've said it before, but how good does it look? I'm so wrapped. Woohoo! Okay, so we can't use the brackets that came that I had the ARB awning on. I have to put new brackets on. These ones look much sturdier as well, Dean. Yeah, these <laughs> should be pretty good. So these are just going to basically bolt on there. Yep. Now with the ARB awning, um, like a lot of the awnings, they're quite narrow. Yep. So that's going to give you more than enough room to move it up or down on this bracket, yep. depending where you where you want it. Um, yep. You know, taking into mind uh, your your own height one and two the height of the canopy opening door. Yeah, of so, course. So that you can easily roll it up. Basically, is what I'm getting at. So yeah, it is marking that off. Um, this will get basically put on on next in that position there. Perfect. Bolt it down. Yep. And we'll do the back one as as well. Excellent. Yeah, I'm a little bit vertically challenged, so I've got a little step ladder that I use for well, that. That's, that's <laughs> handy. <laughs> that's handy, is the other bracket. And on this car, I think everyone's vertically challenged, to be honest. It's so high, it's yeah. awesome. No way a Croc's getting you up there. So. Oh, exactly. So that's, that's all good. But the Vic High Country snakes and that, they can still crawl up, unfortunately. That's <laughs> And how easy is that? Sure. You could crawl in and sleep now. That's it. <laughs> Biggest thing is even if, even if you can't get up to the top end by stretching, yeah. uh, you've got plenty of space on the ladder. I mean, yeah, yeah. you can work your way right up to yeah. the top. Yeah, even step on the tyres, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Grab that for you. Sure. Oh. You're right. Yep. Boy. I'll show you now that it's open. Nice cover. Yep. But basically, when it when opening up your tent, lift it up, flip the bungee cord up on the top there. Yep. And then is there a little louver that it sits in, or just go yeah, up as high as you can? You'll see there's a sail track which runs on oh, the top. Okay. And it kind of just tucks over that. Perfect. Then when it's the rain fly section. Yep. The easiest is to hook it in the eye first. Yep. Okay, push that out and basically slot it in to that bracket receiver there. Perfect. Nice and easy. Yeah, so that's super quick and easy. And that was the other thing. You're one better than, well, I shouldn't really say it on camera, but you're one better than the Alia Cab. Your rain fly is much bigger. Yeah. So if you get in from the sides, you're actually covered. You pop that on camera, mate. Next month they're going to do that. <laughs> we'll have to see. No, that's all good. Hey, that, that's my opinion. I'm allowed on my no, YouTube channel. No, just <laughs> well, thank you for that. It does give you the nice thing is it does give you that side access. Yeah, it does. Which is which is massive. We we are definitely the first and still to this day the only guys which offer that side access. Yeah. Um, well, the rain fly. Mm -hmm. So that's a you know that's makes a, that's a, big a big difference. It's a big thing for us as well. So it's good. You right? Yep. So the reason why we're taking the mattress out is basically so I can draw the brackets into place. Yep. That's all. Otherwise, generally, if we're just mounting a tent, we won't be doing that. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah don't want any accidents. Yeah, here's the underlay. Oh yeah, beautiful. Fantastic. Wait. And that should be everything. Yep. Can't wait to spend my first night in it. Yeah, it's gonna be good. <laughs> So I basically drilled the holes into place for the brackets. Um, so all I'll be doing is putting a, a adhesive sealant, like a Sicker Flex product, mm -hmm. um, around the holes just to make sure we don't get any water ingress in there. That'll squash out nicely. I mean, this stuff is so strong you probably don't even need bolts, <laughs> but we'll put in bolts anyway. So. Better to be safe than sorry. Absolutely. Right, so basically when it comes time to, well all the brackets are now bolted in place, um, when it comes time to closing your tent, what you're going to have to do is aisle it in first when setting up and aisle it out first when closing it, it makes it a lot easier. So aisle it out, then the springs will all flap down, undo it, and that can rest quite easily on the top of your mattress and your bedding, remembering that there's 100 mils of space on top of your mattress. Mm -hmm. so you can leave your, your duvet or your duna pillows, um, you name it on the inside there. Spare jumper, so there's, a, there's quite a bit of space. So, top first. Now, one thing to notice you'll see that these toggles now, these toggles are the ones that hold up the canvas in rolls. The canvas on the bottom end rolls up there, and the canvas, I mean, the fly screen will roll up to the top. Now, when closing your tent, you can leave your canvas unzipped, but always zip up the fly screen. The only reason, or the main reason why we say this, is that it tucks your toggles into place. So, as you can see, it's going to be forced to go on the inside, and that way it can't get fouled on anything, especially the ones on the sides. So those get nice and tucked out of the way. You've got this rope there, which is pretty simple. It allows you to pull it down to about there, so you can get your hands on the handles, pull it down the rest of the way. Now what you'll see is the tent will basically stay in that similar spot without too much pressure being added onto it. Tuck the last bit of canvas in. Now that's if you're not using your bungee cord, all right? <laughs> the easiest is, the same thing, get your cord down from the top, pull that down, and what it'll do is automatically tuck it all in for you as it's pulling down. The same thing, grab the metal cord, do a nice tug on that, and as you can see, beautifully folds in, last little bit to tuck in there, and just double check on both sides, Lovely. Much easier. And at the rear. Much, much easier. There you go. That's in. There you go. Perfect. Well, that's fantastic. My pillow's going to stay in there. I've got my sleeping bag. Perfect. Right. Now, we just mount the awning. Now to mount the awning. Exactly. Attention to detail. What are you doing there, Dean? Oh, but, um, so I've got a rust um, prohibitor paint, basically. You just take a conventional earbud, spray the tip up. So if you are drilling into steel, like these brackets for the awnings are steel. Mm -hmm. Once you've made a few holes, then um, the, the paint just works really great, you know, to stop any start of rust from occurring. Yep. So yeah, we just paint those up, basically. Great for when you go through body work on a motor vehicle as well. Mm -hmm. If you have to drill in for electrical wiring, yep. Um, you know things like rust proof, rust inhibitor paint, um, also uh, tectile, tectile. It's fantastic yep. stuff. Um, just for for rusting, especially on the coast. You know, most of Australia is all along the coast, so you've got to watch the rust. That's true.
Alrighty. Good to see you take pride in it though. A lot of people just don't worry about it. Yeah, that's <laughs> no, all good. <laughs> so we just got to get a few extra hands as you can see. <laughs> Great, um, basically popping this, this ALB awning back on for you. So, put that roughly into position. That should do it. Now, if I measured correctly, which, which, I, hope you did. which I hope I did too, <laughs> um, we should fit in pretty easily. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that. So now it's just a big washer. Go nut. You can just go with it in. Holding it up. Oh, that's good. You got it in. Perfect. Hey, there's a man. I'm tall. Not that big. George. Beautiful. You happy with the day, mate? Yep. Spot on. Okay. You're all finished. That's right. It's like going to the barber shop and getting your hair done. That's it. Much better than that. Come on, I don't have a lot of hair, so. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful. Alrighty, here Absolutely she's all on. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Love it. Looks fantastic. Yeah, it I'm does. sure you guys agree. It looks spot on. Well, madam, she's going to have many cozy nights up there. So oh, I sure will. So enjoy going bush. I mean, that's fantastic. a big thing, eh? Just that's get, it. Getting out there. Thank, thank you, you once again, mate. Safe, mate. Thank you very much. Cheers. I've just left the bush company. Dean, Simon, mate, gentlemen. Fantastic to deal with. Very happy that I chose the bush company for the rooftop tent. Um, just really, really pleased. So, I guess that's it for this video. Time to start heading back home. Actually, you know what? I don't feel like going home yet. Let me tell you. I don't feel like going home yet. Let's take the scenic route home. You know what? Let's go. Let's go through the Simpson Desert. Why not? I'm going to go through the Simpson Desert, down the Udnadatta, and i just tell the missus, hey, I got sidetracked, I took a wrong turn. And I'll, I'll be home a week later. <laughs> she won't mind, she'll be right. That's what I'm going to do. So, next stop, well, somewhere for the night, but Birdsville. Birdsville and Simpson Desert, here I come and I can test out the rooftop tent properly. If you can't tell, I'm very, very, very excited, wrapped, happy, whatever you want to call it. Yeah! Woohoo! Anyway, like always, I might break this, shall I break the video into two halves? Nah, I'll just do a continuation. Actually, I will break it into two halves. Anyway, stay tuned for Simpson Desert Crossing, Birdsville, Uden Data Track. Epic drive home. Anyway, like always, break the cage, get outdoors, guys. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Woohoo!